How do artists get ideas for abstract paintings? For one, they may simply focus on a compositional technique and be expressive, but some artists also use the natural or man-made environments as inspiration. American street artist Cause appropriated the cartoon image of SpongeBob in an abstract manner. Lebanese-American artist Etel Adnan simplified landscapes into geometric shapes with striking color. Georgia O'Keeffe painted extreme close-ups of flowers. Contemporary French artist Jean-Jacques Pigeon is known for his layered paintings of floral motifs. German-American painter Wolf Kahn is known for his blend of realism and color field approach in his landscape works. Piet Mondrian's style evolved geometrically over time. For this task, we'll take inspiration from the work of Jean-Jacques Pigeon and utilize layers of colors in the background with line drawings of plants superimposed on top. For our composition, we could use a vertical, diagonal, or S-curve strategy with our work in the foreground. I will use tempera paint, which is water-based, but you could also follow along if using acrylic. This painting is not a finished work, but is instead a learning opportunity to test and trial ideas, while it's also implementing painting techniques. This painting should take around 45 to 60 minutes to complete. Feel free to pause or rewind as you follow along. Let's get started. Abstract Painting Techniques and Skills Abstracting Reality as this is a practice task, let's use an A4 size paper in our sketchbook. What we are going to do is build up some layers of color and then superimpose some leaf or flower line marks on top. First, get a piece of construction paper or card. Draw out a large leaf shape and then two smaller ones. Cut them out. Get some masking tape to cover the scissor cut. Trim off the excess tape. We will use the positive and negative cut pieces later. On my palette, I have dark blue, cyan or light blue, green, yellow, a touch of black, and white. Take note of how I've organized my palette and how much paint I have taken. My palette is organized off to the side, allowing me space to mix colors on my palette should I decide to do so. For brushes, I have one larger flat brush, a filbert, which has a curved top, and two smaller round brushes, but I'll probably only need one. You may decide to have a water cup nearby to clean your brushes, as well as some paper towels. Let's start by taking our large flat brush and get some white to mix with blue. When mixing with white, take small amounts of the other color to start off with. I scrape the paint off the brush by going against the palette. Cover your entire page with this color. Don't worry about being very neat, as we are just establishing a background color go right to the edge of the paper. If you run out of paint, simply mix more. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Blow it dry if needed. For our next layer, we will make a slightly darker blue than the previous one. We can create this right onto the previous hue area we made. Now get the leaf paper cutouts you made. We're going to use these as a stencil. Take the larger negative space one and first paint along the edges by painting away from them. If you paint towards the cut, paint may bleed underneath. Go around the edges first and then paint the middle area. Paint several of these larger ones around your paper, having some run off the frame. Play with orientation as well. Use the smaller stencils to fill in some of the empty spaces Wash your brush when complete. I'm going to leave mine in the water cup and just switch to the filbert brush, which was the curved one. Using my filbert, I take some yellow. Take note how I place the paint on the brush. I am pulling it away from the side and not dipping it in the middle or scooping it like a spoon. I suggest you only apply paint halfway up the bristles. I then pat it on the palette to make it consistent. I'm going to then dab it on my paper towel and try attempting a dry brush technique. Using the very top of the bristles, I am lightly going to skim the paper to apply the color. Make a few of these kinds of marks around your composition, paying attention to balance. I'm going to take some more yellow and mix it with a touch of green and repeat the previous process, but make my marks more visible. I will scatter these throughout the composition. Clean your brush afterwards. 
I need some more white on my palette. I'm now going to take the green and mix it with white. I'll repeat the previous process and place another layer of darker green leaves on top. Again, paying attention to balance in my work. But this time, I'll create fewer leaves. I'm now going to take the green and mix it with some cyan blue and white. It's okay if you also add a very, very small amount of black. If it needs to be darker, add a touch of the darker blue. Create another layer on your work with the leaf stencils. Wash and pat dry your brush afterwards. I'm also going to take some green, blue, and yellow and create a few visible brush marks. This stage is optional, but feel free to try it out. It's better to experiment now rather than later. I place these marks randomly, but spread them out evenly. Blow dry your page if needed. Next make some pale blue. Get the positive space leaf cutouts from before. I'm not exactly sure how this will turn out, but let's try. Arrange your three leaves and paint down on them, sweeping away from the edges. When done, create a new arrangement and repeat the process. Repeat this process, working your way down the page. Reapply the paint color to any areas that need it. You see, this has created a transparent or cloudy layer on top of the background. You may not like it, but it adds another dimension to the work. Out of curiosity, I'm going to make a pale yellow and create a few marks with the stencil. Blow dry your page if needed. I'm now going to take the small round brush. Using white, I am simply going to make some leaf shaped outlines on the work. I'm not going to make these small, but larger to contrast with the smaller stencil shapes. I'm going to repeat the previous process, but now do it with a pale blue. We are nearing the end of the painting and we are going to put another layer using dark blue. We will create some silhouette plants. We can decide to do this vertically with the plants going up or horizontally. Another option is diagonally or by creating an S-curve. Let's go with the S-curve. I'm going to first create the stem in S format and then add some leaves. Keep these leaves irregular and not too consistent or similar to the others. So I'm thinking the composition needs more, so I'll add some additional plants. One here on the left going vertically, and one on the right on a diagonal. Add leaves to these plants as well. I'm going to also add a second coat of the blue to the plants. Blow dry your work if required. For our last layer, let's mix some black into the blue. Doing this always looks better than simply using black straight out of the bottle. I'm going to make this one smaller and more subtle. I place it around the bottom third of the composition. So our painting is finished. One thing I like about this is the layering, the limited color palette and the darker plant silhouettes, which add contrast. What could we do differently or improve next time? I'd probably take better care of my plant stems. If doing a final painting, I would probably gather plant images to use as reference. Maybe that pale blue or white wash area could be stronger or thicker in masking the areas underneath. Artists use the natural and man-made environments for inspiration in their work. How would it look if you took inspiration from architecture instead of plants, like British artist Sarah Morris? Feel free to research this if it is something you are interested in. Check out some of the other abstract painting tutorials available in the playlist linked in the card above. Good luck with your painting. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and gained some insights. Feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, or leave a comment, question, or future video suggestion below. This has been a Foo Rancoon.
Video Production.